What started as a pun has now become a global celebration. May the 4th has been claimed by Star Wars fans the world over to share their love of the sci-fi franchise. But is it really just about the movies and the merchandise? With many of you celebrating 40 years of a galaxy far, far away, our reporter Richard Stringer went to find out why the Force is so strong with this one. In 1977, a film would be released that would change the world, and 40 years on, the Star Wars franchise is uniting people of all ages in a global community of superfans. And with May the 4th being adopted as official Star Wars Day, there was no better time to explore how the saga has made such an impact. 40 years ago, Star Wars hit the big screen uh, and the world was changed forever on a global scale. Fans uh, have, ever since then, loved and supported the franchise and today is the day where fans come together all over the world to celebrate this and I think Star Wars has captured the imagination because it tells a very basic simple story on a mythic scale uh, the, the sort of grand battle between good and evil the, the, the Republic versus the Empire and then those sort of iconic characters Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader battling it out for the supremacy and, and, and peace within the galaxy. And I think because it frames those sort of real fundamental ideas of good versus evil uh, in that sort of super galactic setting, it really captured the imagination. Historically, if you look at it in the 70s, you know, it was pretty dull times in, in America and in, indeed globally. Uh, Hollywood was indeed in, in, in the doldrums. Uh, and I think Star Wars really sort of, you know, changed how we perceive both sort of pop culture and Hollywood itself. It's, it's tapped into a sort of the sort of global vernacular. Uh, it's a way of communicating between different people. You know, you, you go to England, you go to America, you go to Europe, you go to you know South America, Australia. You know, everyone's heard of Star Wars, and it's a means through which you can communicate on a sort of global scale. So my first memory was seeing Empire Strikes Back. Uh, in cinemas in the early 80s, you know. Uh, might have been a little young, but my dad brought me into the cinema anyways and it immediately captured my imagination. Yoda, that iconic figure, you know, I just had to have the toy, <laughs> had to have the little figure when I was a kid. I think even if you're just a fan of film or science fiction, I think you should see these films because they, they tell, you know, interesting stories in imaginative ways uh, and, and on a sort of industrial level, use, you know, great special effects and spectacle to bring you these stories. So I think, you know, a non-Star Wars fan should just look at it for those reasons. It's a entertainment, it's what film is about, it's about capturing the imagination, taking you somewhere for a couple of hours, escaping the humdrum. Um, and who wouldn't want that, even if you're not a die-hard Yoda fan or, or dress up as a Jedi? And the appeal for the movies is not just for those watching. There are also those who dream of being a part of the cast. Uh, so I was in two Star Wars movies, in Episode 2, uh, which was Attack of the Clones, and also uh, Episode 3, which is The Revenge of the Sith. Initially I was cast for the double for Obi-Wan Kenobi, and also did his lightsabering as well. But I ended up playing, as you do on those kind of films, you end up being asked to do all sorts of things. So I was uh, Poggle the Lesser in Attack of the Clones. Um, I was also a clone trooper. As a kid, I was a huge Star Wars fan and I used to love watching the films over and over again. I was at drama school in the early 90s and at the end of my three years, I decided to write to all the big uh, producers and directors and casting people. And I wrote to George Lucas, said, you know, if you're ever thinking of ever doing any more Star Wars films, I would love to be in them. And I got a really nice letter back um, saying that, yes, hopefully one day we are looking at doing some Star Wars films. What was great was one particular day I stood next to someone watching while they were filming. I asked this chap, I said, oh, well, what do you do then? You know, thinking he might be a crew member. And he suddenly turned around and said, oh, I'm C-3PO. And it was Auntie Daniels. That was, I think, the only time I ever got really starstruck. On one of the days I was playing Poggle the Lesser. Um, and I was a little bit nervous um, and I don't normally get nervous at all of filming or theatre or anything really um, but I was a little bit nervous because it was working opposite Christopher Lee and I had in my my mind that uh, that Christopher Lee was probably a very um, a very strict sort of person and he would be very um, on the ball and he wouldn't take any prisoners sort of thing so I was thinking okay you know this 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 could be a, an interesting couple of days and um I had, as Poggle, I had the Death Star plans, um, which was a, a small device that basically I had to walk around, and it was quite complicated. Um, even walking around the, the table that actually wasn't there, 
and I had to also avoid lots of cables and wires and everything else. So you, ha you have to, to look someone in the eye, but at the same time, be aware of all these different things. And there were also um, puppeteers underneath the table who were operating different parts of other creatures on the other side of the table. So it was quite a complicated stepping over them and stepping and you know, avoiding all that. And I have to give him the... The, the thing and the the line was in poker language but basically here are the death star plans you know don't let them fall into the wrong hands and um uh i happened during one of the takes to say this is amazing you know that the, the prop people have created this out of they've obviously done a mold for plastic and everything else and they've put a light inside and they really thought about it and, and the prop guy started to laugh and I asked him what was so funny. He said, well, we forgot all about the Death Star plans. He said, it was only this morning that we remembered that we needed to have this device. So he said, I stopped off at Halfords. It's a car air freshener, um, uh, just with a screw on the, on the top. And we took the air freshener bit out and put a couple of red lights in. Uh, so we got the giggles over that. And I, I went round during one of the rehearsals and I, instead of saying the line, I just handed them Death Star plans. and went, there you go, sir, si, something to freshen the whole galaxy with. To which Christopher Lee just couldn't stop laughing for the rest of the whole day, um, and it took us for. I, I'm sure that the 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 the, uh, the crew were uh, cursing me because we couldn't get a scene out because he was laughing so much. But um, uh, and he was such a giggler, and he was, he was brilliant. He was absolutely completely opposite to the way I thought he was going to be. Um, so a really lovely chap. But I mean, it was a great experience, and it was uh, fantastic to say that you were there when. I suppose in some ways history was being made. This is Richard Stringer, Fed That Solent.